Thank you. Hello, Merhaba, Gunaiden. Uh, hoş geldiniz. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm a recruitment officer at the University of Toronto. And um, I want to thank you for joining me the, this morning or this evening in uh, Turkey time uh, to hear a little bit more about the University of Toronto. So um, for those of you that have joined today, this session really focuses only on undergraduate programs. I know there's some of you that are interested in graduate programs. Um, we're a very big school, uh, as I'll talk to in the presentation. And so my area of expertise is only at the undergraduate level. So I can't really speak to uh, specific questions about graduate programs. Um, I can direct you to the, the website and um, hopefully there'll be uh, our graduate school will be doing some sessions like this that will be more specific to that. But I want to remind um, students or, or, or students or whoever is watching that this will focus on undergrad. Yes. So if you're not interested in undergraduate programs, this won't really be relevant to you. And I don't want you to, you know, spend too much time listening because there's a good, I, I only know, uh, you know, very limited information about graduate programs. So someone asks, should graduate program seekers leave? Um, it's, it's, up to you because this this presentation will not be covering graduate program so I think it's yes you, you can absolutely leave there's no uh, <laughs> no pressure but uh, yeah I just wanted to let everyone know that that's what we're going to be talking about today so that you know now in case you do want to um, leave the chat and uh, explore options for graduate program chats that will be happening um, I don't work in that department so I don't know when those are so I just wanted to explain that at the beginning and uh, let those people know that there'll be uh, lots of opportunity for you to learn more about us and other presentations, webinars that we'll be doing for undergraduate programs. So that's going to be the focus today. All right. So when it comes to um, the University of Toronto, uh, we are the top university in Canada. And um, not only are we the top university in Canada, we're one of the top universities in the world. So what that means to students, of course, is that you're gonna get a very strong uh, university education and um, it's gonna have that portability. So you can take your University of Toronto degree anywhere you wanna go, whether that's uh, back to Turkey or you wanna go somewhere in Europe, or you wanna stay in Canada, uh, you're going to have lots of options, and that's the strength of having uh, a really well-recognized international university degree, is that it has that portability. So number one in Canada, and also top 20 in the world. And uh, what makes us such a great university? Uh, well, there's lots of lots of things that um, uh, make us a great university, and and I can see there's questions in the chat. Um, it's very difficult for me to present and answer questions at the same time. So I would just ask that if you do have questions, perhaps we can hold them to the end. I'm gonna try and just go through this quickly so that I will have more time to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so for the students asking about graduate programs or specific questions, I, 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 I'm not gonna answer those at this point. I will uh, first do the presentation and then I can answer your questions. Um, so, yeah, perhaps it's best just to hold those off as much as you can, and then I can uh, go to the questions uh, or the chat feature uh, at the end. Um, but I will just, for those that are asking about graduate programs, Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the chat. Sorry about this. So again, for those that are interested in graduate programs, that's the link. You can check that out, and hopefully their website will have some sessions about uh, 
uh, stuff like this that we're doing today. Okay, so other than that, let's hold the questions and then uh, to the end of the session. So what makes U of T great? Well, number one in Canada, top 25 in the world. Um, we have a very strong legacy of discovery and innovation. So things like the world's first nerve transplant, insulin was discovered at U of T, um, stem cell research began at the University of Toronto as well. So there's a really strong uh, history. Uh, we've had war Academy Award winners come from U of T, Nobel laureates, prime ministers, Olympic athletes. So there's a really strong tradition, history, uh, legacy of discovery and innovation. So uh, we attract great students from all around the world, like you, Turkish students, of course, but in terms of our professors, our faculty, we also attract top faculty because we are the number one research university in Canada, and those professors want to go where their research will be funded and supported. Um, now, Something else, of course, is our location. So if you're interested in, in studying at the University of Toronto, you're also going to be able to live in one of the world's most safe, dynamic uh, regions of the world, which is Toronto. So uh, Toronto is known as being one of the most diverse cities in the world. Half the population have been born outside of Canada and speak a language other than English. So you'll be studying with people from all around the world. Um, I usually go to Turkey uh, and, and recruit uh, at, at uh, high schools in Turkey, and I'm I'm very sad this year that I can't because of the pandemic. But um, uh, when you hopefully when you are able to come to Toronto, you'll see that such a great city, lots of cultures, people from all around the world, and um, there there uh, there's something for everyone. Great restaurants, shopping, sporting events, concerts, uh, all of the great things you'd be looking for in a world class city. Toronto has something for everyone. We have the fourth largest transit system in North America as well. So it's easy for you to get around um, the city. It's a walkable city. And we also have um, many different, uh, uh, you know, our, our, I mentioned this, the subway system, the metro. Um, lots of students will ride bikes. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great place to live, a great place to study, and it has something for everyone. So in terms of the history of U of T, we were founded in 1827, and that's older than the city of Toronto. So it really is, our, our, our campus is a landmark of the city or a tourist attraction. And uh, we are the largest university in Canada. So because of that, what makes us the biggest is the fact that um, we have three campuses. And this is where being a large university means you have a lot of choices. And one of the first choices you get to make is which of these campuses do you want to study at? It's important to remember that they all offer the same quality of the education. So a uh, U of T degree is the same, whether it's at St. George, Mississauga, or Scarborough. We have three campuses, but it's all the same University of Toronto quality of education. So when you graduate, your, your degree says U of T. And that's what's most important to remember. You get to choose which campus you want based on the program you're interested in and the environment you want to study in. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. But again, lots of choice. Which campus is right for you, you get to choose based on where you want to be and what you want to study. So our Mississauga campus is located half an hour outside of the city center. So uh, 30 minutes from the downtown core. Mississauga is mid-sized, so there's about 15,000 students on this campus. It's very modern, so many of the buildings are very new, so it's a very modern, lots of trees, lots of grass, beautiful, natural campus, mid-sized, half hour from the city. Then, of course, we have uh, the St. George campus, which is located in the city center. So St. George is the original campus. There's over 35,000 undergraduate students on St. George. So you get a mix of old buildings from the 1800s and modern buildings as well. So you're going to get a lot of uh, information in terms of, uh, or rather, uh, a mix of old and new right in the city center. Scarborough is located half an hour east of the St. George campus. And uh, much like Mississauga, it's mid-size, about 14,000 students. And um, on, the, on the Scarborough campus, it's also very modern. So you have uh, many new buildings and uh, again, only a half an hour east of the city center. 
In terms of what you can study, we have five different academic communities for you. So these are the, the general areas of study that U of T has for undergraduate study. So you can see music, kinesiology, architecture, engineering, and then the big area is arts, business, and science. So all three campuses have arts, business, and science options. So if that's what you're interested in, you can choose any one of the three campuses and you can apply to more than one campus. And I'll talk about that in just a little bit as well. If you do choose the St. George campus, uh, because that's the largest, we have a smaller college system in place. So you see these seven colleges. Uh, these basically are residents. All international students are guaranteed housing for their first year of university. And these are the different styles of residence that we have. So when you do apply, if you choose St. George, Faculty of Arts and Science, you'll be asked to rank your top three. So there's seven, and we say, what are, what are your top three choices of these seven? It has nothing to do with what you want to study. These colleges don't have any effect on your what, your, uh, what you want to study, but rather, where do you want to live? Do you prefer traditional dorm style with a meal plan, or do you prefer more modern apartment style where you could cook your own meals, for example? So it's a smaller community while being part of this larger campus. So there's social activities, there's clubs, there's sports, all offered to you on a smaller basis. So that's how we break down the size of St. George into these seven smaller neighborhoods. And you're part of one of the neighborhoods. So uh, that's, uh, that's how the college system works. Um, and I'm just, I, I'm also going to just put in the chat now for those that are, uh, um, excuse me, for those that are interested, if you'd like to um, sign up or get more information about the university, I'm just going to post this chat, um, or I'm going to post a, uh, a link in the chat where you'll be able to get more information, or rather you can register uh, for more information. So hang tight for a second. Here we go. Uh, this, yeah, there, I just posted it. So if, if you click on that link that I posted, you can put your your name in your what school you go to and what program you're interested in, and then we'll be able to help you and contact you if you're interested in learning more about the university. So please, that link that I just posted, you can register your information. Once you input that, then you're going to be in our, our, our database, and we can basically help you, and uh, it will allow you to learn more about us. So yeah please fill out that form if you're interested in learning more. It's a great way to learn more about us. All right. Now, once you get to the university, we want to make sure that you're doing well, you're happy, and you're supported. And there's a lot of great ways in which we do that. So we have uh, career centers, of course, where you can find out about the jobs that you're interested in and, uh, and, and see about jobs in Toronto that you could apply for as a student or after graduation, of course. Uh, we have academic success centers, so if you need any help with your studies, we have uh, many great services in place to ensure that you are doing well and you're reaching your full potential. We have uh, counseling, that's academic counseling, but also personal counseling. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to ensure, again, that you are doing well and that you're, you're reaching your full potential and you're, and you're, you're happy uh, because that's very important. And, um, so great support, so much so that 91% of our students successfully go on from the first year into the second year. And of course, we know that this year with COVID, uh, it's been a very difficult year for everyone around the world, but we want to let our students know, future students like yourself, that uh, if you visit You Together 2020, this is our, our website dedicated to the COVID-19 and how our university is dealing with that and, and supporting our students. So. Rest assured that students aren't going to be disadvantaged because of anything uh, that impacts COVID, like exams being canceled or schools having to change their system because of a shutdown, for example. So uh, that's the, the, the good news out of this is that we are going to continue to support our students and we have a full plan on that website regarding U of T and COVID-19. So one of the other benefits about studying at U of T is that uh, you can really mix and match your programs of study. So if there's someone out there that's interested in studying chemistry, but they also want to learn about history, you can do that. 
You can have a double major in history and chemistry. Uh, if you want to be an engineer and do a minor in music, that's a possibility as well. So unlike some schools in the world where you have to decide in high school what you want to apply to, at U of T, you apply to a general area, but you can change your mind. And if you're not 100% sure of where or what you want to study, you also have that option as well to, to change your mind or figure things out as you go. So flexibility is key. Uh, we have over 700 program areas, so that's a great selection for students. Uh, and in most cases, you're letting us know specifically what you want to study after your first year. So lots of choices and you're not locked in. So in terms of arts, business, science, all three campuses are going to offer you this. Arts, we have things like philosophy, English history, business. Toronto is the financial capital of Canada and the third largest financial district in North America. So a great place for students who are interested in business. Science is, uh, we publish more scientific universe, more scientific research than any other public university in North America as well. So great options in science. If you're interested in engineering, we have eight core programs you can apply to like mechanical, civil, computer engineering, for example. But we also have track one, which is, again, you know you wanna be an engineer, but you're not sure which one of the core eight you wanna focus on. You do the general year first, and then you choose which one of those. And then, of course, engineering science is also available. So great options there. And we also have these three smaller faculties available on the St. George campus, architecture and visual studies, kinesiology and music. Three smaller faculties only offered on St. George. So these are the different academic areas that we have. As I mentioned, um, the programs, depending on what you want to study, you'll see that some of them are offered as major, which means you can do a double major. So the example I used was chemistry as one major, history as your other major. So that's combining arts and science. So if you're interested in that, you can do that. Some of the programs we have are offered as specialists. So like engineering or commerce, those are typically specialist degrees, which means that's going to be your primary area of focus where you're going to do most of your, your courses will be in that area. But you could do a minor in addition to that. So you could be an engineer, like I said, and have a minor in music. So this just shows you that there's a lot of different opportunities for you to mix and match, as I said, your interests at the university and that it is very flexible. Um, lots of opportunities for you as far as work goes for those interested in doing a co-op where you get to go to school and work at the same time. International students are eligible for these programs. Uh, so very popular, our Scarborough campus has co-op, but also engineering and computer science has a professional experience year where students can go to, as I said, go to school and work at the same time. Um, so that's a great feature. And again, international students are eligible for those. You can also do research for credit as early as your second year at the university. So that's another uh, thing to look forward to is doing your own research independently. Um, when it comes to if you wanted to take a course maybe outside of Canada, you can do that as well. You can take a course in Europe or in Asia or Australia. We have lots of great uh, learning opportunities around the world. And when it comes to the fun side of university, clubs, sports, uh, we have over a thousand student clubs for you to get involved with. So a great way for you to meet people and make friends and lots of sports and other things for you to do to, again, have fun at university, make a lot of friends and build your resume at the same time. So that's important. So hopefully this sounds good so far. Now let's talk about, uh, again, for those that are posting questions, I'm going to be taking those at the end. So please hold your questions uh, for now. So how do you apply to the university? Very easy, it's two steps. The first step is to submit your online application. Now it's not available yet, so the application is gonna be open in the next couple of weeks, I would say. Usually by the beginning of October, end of September, the application is ready. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the first step of the application because it's biographical. Who are you, where are you from, what do you wanna study? So. That's why it's so easy. You cannot send us any transcripts. There's no letters of reference, no essays, no interviews, none of that stuff. Just a quick biographical application that is the first step. 
Now, for those who are interested in applying to more than one program at U of T, you can do that. So it's one program per campus or one program per faculty. So let's say you're interested in business. You could study business at all three of our campuses. You could choose Com Rotman Commerce St. George, Commerce Mississauga, and BBA at Scarborough. That's allowed because they're different campuses. If you wanted to be downtown, you could choose one from Arts and Science, Engineering, and say Architecture. Three choices all downtown because they're different faculties. So I encourage students to apply to more than one campus if you're interested because it increases your chance of getting an offer of admission. So one program per campus or one program per faculty. So once you've submitted that 15 minute biographical application, within about one week, we then send you the link for our join portal. So the join portal is basically your application. And on that application, you're gonna log in, you create a password, you're going to be able to start sending us your transcripts and self-report your grades at that time. So uh, as soon as you have access to this portal, you can upload your transcripts. So your nine through 11, that's already complete, so you can upload that. But you'll also be asked to self-report your grades. We focus on the last two years of high school. So um, basically, that's what we're most interested in. So we want you to self-report 11th grade, that's complete, and you're gonna list your grade 12 classes. And as soon as you get an in-progress grade, you're gonna be able to put what that grade is or your midterm results. So 11th is complete, you write the courses that you took, the grade that you got, and then for grade 12, you're gonna list your courses, and as soon as you get an in-term or midterm result, you're gonna post that there. And that's the information that we use to uh, assess you for admission. You'll also be able to apply for residence on your portal. So it's basically, you check your application, did we receive it? Um, you can start sending your grades there and, uh, and check to see any updates on your portal. So very important um, for uh, students who are uh, always ask me this question, so I hope I have your attention now. We do not ask for any other information other than what I just mentioned. The 15-minute application followed by you, once you get access to the portal, you then start uploading your transcripts. Only these programs that you see in front of you now have an additional step. So that could be uh, essays, um, a questionnaire that you fill out, a personal profile, or even a prepared video where you would be asked a question and you only have a minute or two to think of your response and then you have to record yourself uh, answering that question. So if you're interested in one of the programs that you see here, there will be an additional step and we will email you. We will email you from that portal and tell you this is the additional information, how you can access it, what is required and when it is due. If you're not interested in one of these, there's nothing else you need to do than apply, make the payment, and of course, start sending us your transcripts uh, when you have access to your portal. And these, these, you can always research these in more detail. So if you wanna know supplemental application engineering U of T, put that in a Google search and we're gonna have videos, there's YouTube videos you can watch, we're going to explain it step by step to you as well. So very important because, again, I get this question all the time. These are the only areas that have additional information we want other than your grades. Another important thing is English facility. So um, if English is not your first language, you will have to present one of these tests. We don't have a preference. We accept any of these combinations that you see in front of you. IELTS is most common in Turkey, so 6.5, no band below 6. Um, one thing this year is we will hopefully be accepting Duolingo. It's not official yet, and it's not confirmed, but the university is working on um, partnering with Duolingo so that we can hopefully accept that. Um, so fingers crossed, we will. You just have to check the website in the coming weeks to see. But uh, we are hoping to add that to uh, the tests that we accept. It's not official yet, but like I said, hopefully it will. Uh, but until you see it on the website, this, these are the tests that we do accept.
And just another thing, if you do apply, make sure that you uh, use the same names, your Turkish names. I know there's uh, some students have middle names. Um, so make sure you use the same name when you apply as in the same name when you sign up for your IELTS test as well. Just be consistent because if the names don't match, that can slow down your application. Okay, so uh, we're almost finished. I just wanna recap and then we'll get to your questions. But this is the timeline for your grade 12 year. You can submit your application. Again, it'll be available within the next two weeks, most likely. Once you submit that 15 to 20 minute biographical application, within about one week, you receive the link to your join portal. On that portal is when you can start uploading your transcripts. So you wanna send us everything that's completed already, and then you'll be able to self-report your grades and, um, and send us your mid-year transcripts when those are available as well. If your program has any additional supplemental information, we notify you about what is required and when you should sub submit it. And um, basically, the official deadline for documents is February 1st, and we start making offers. It's rolling admission, so uh, this says December to April, but it's really more likely um, I would say February, March, April. Those three months are when most of the offers of admission are made. So that's when you can expect to hear from us, as long as you submit everything early and on time. We recommend you apply by November 7th. So that's a recommended deadline to complete that 15 to 20 minute application. So as soon as that's available, complete that by November 7th. That way you have access to your portal and you can start submitting your documents to us early. Early is always best. That will allow us to give you uh, hopefully an early offer of admission. As far as the requirements go, we typically say very good to excellent results. So for Turkish diploma in percentages, uh, most programs mid to high 80s is competitive for admission. But there are some programs like engineering, Rotman Commerce, computer science, architecture, um, those are, are more competitive and they have higher averages. So definitely I would say high 80s, even low 90s for those areas in um, uh, that I just mentioned, those more competitive ones, high 80s, low 90s for those, but most other programs, mid to high 80s is competitive for admission. SATs, APs are optional. The university is test optional. We always have been for non-US uh, curriculum, but for Turkey, again, you don't need to write these. Uh, if you're writing them for other universities that require them and you wanna send the scores, you can. So our, our, if, if you're writing them, um, you can send them to us, but it's completely optional. It, you won't be disadvantaged if you don't have them. So we don't want you to do extra work that you don't have to do. We accept Turkish diploma, that is enough. Um, or if you're an IB student, IB is enough. Um, so it's, we accept either one of those. You're not required to do SATs, APs, unless it's part of your mandatory curriculum at your school. For those following the IB, low to mid 30s is competitive for most programs. Again, the higher, more selective programs business, engineering, computer science, you should probably have high 30s for those. Scholarships, you're automatically considered for any scholarship opportunity, so there's no separate application. When you apply, you're automatically considered based on your grades alone. So that means no extracurricular, no financial need, it's only based on your grades. These are called merit-based awards and you're automatically considered. So another nice way we keep it simple, there's nothing you have to do. Once you get your offer of admission, within about one week after you've been admitted, we send you an email that says check your portal because on that portal you'll see an update that says you've been uh, awarded this scholarship. And the amount can vary. It can be $5,000, it could be $10,000, $20,000, $25,000, $25,000 that's renewable over four years. So we have some new scholarships that we introduced last year uh, for our international students. So there's, there's more opportunities, but again, these are automatic, no application. 
We only have one scholarship that you need to be nominated by your school. It's called the Lester B. Pearson Scholarship. And this is one student per school that can be nominated. And so you talk to your counselors if they want to nominate you, they do that. And then we send you the link for the application. The Pearson is a full ride scholarship for all four years. So it covers everything, tuition, books, housing. Um, obviously it's very competitive. That's why only one student can be nominated. But other than that, you're automatically considered for all of the awards that we have for international students. And if you check this web website, Explorer, awardexplorer.utoronto.ca, that's where you can see all of those scholarships I was mentioning, if they're renewable, and of course, that international students are eligible. There's filters you can use as well. So that's the good news. And like I said, the Pearson Award has that nomination. So you want to talk to your counselor about potentially being nominated for that award. So just some quick advice, as I, I, I mentioned, apply early. Uh, I know the application isn't available yet, so you're no one's behind at all. But um, I would say within the month of October, you should apply to U of T. Uh, check your email so that you can log into the portal and start sending us documents to date. And you have to continue to work hard because all, all of our offers of admission are conditional. They're conditional upon us getting your final grades in the summer. So even if you get an offer in February or March, we still have to see your final grades in the summer to hold to, to confirm your place of admission. So you just have to continue to work hard all year long. And this is a great website. I, I hope you can write this website down because um, we're gonna have uh, basically uh, other sessions like this where you can ask a recruiter uh, we'll have information sessions that are specific to engineering, specific to business. So check that website because you're going to see a list of all of our broadcasts, our webinars coming up this fall. And we're going to have a lot. So lots of opportunities to learn more about the university. And um, I'm just going to write in the chat here again, uh, for those of you that are perhaps just joining or missed it earlier, um, this link that I just posted in the chat. If you want to fill that out, put your name, uh, what you're interested in studying, and we'll help you uh, learn more and do research about the University of Toronto. And we can tell you about upcoming webcasts by filling out that. So please do fill it out. It helps us to help you learn more about the university. So you get to get a, a world-class uh, education um, that has that portability, top university in Canada, top 20 in the world, uh, all while doing it in a really great city of Toronto that's safe, clean, diverse, has something for everyone. And you get to be at a university that has a lot of flexibility inside and outside of the classroom as far as what you want to study, how you want to study it, and then all of those extracurricular opportunities that are going to be available to you as well. So those are some of the reasons why hopefully you'll consider applying to U of T. Okay, so now I will try um, to answer as many questions as I can. There's lots of them, so I'm gonna scroll down to the very bottom. Okay. Um, Okay, so someone was asking about civil um, aviation. We, we have uh, aerospace engineering that's available. It's, it's not for flight attendants though. That's something you would pursue in college, but if you're interested in building airplanes, for example, that's aerospace engineering. Um, so in terms of the campuses, um, as far as which one is best for you, so someone's, uh, I'm going through the chat now, um, there really is no one best campus. It's about what you want to study. So for example, if you want engineering, that's only offered on St. George, so that makes it easy. But if you want to do computer science, all three campuses have computer science. So then you need to pick which campus. And as I said, you could apply to all three and see if you get offers from all three, then you can decide, or maybe only one campus makes you an offer, and that makes the decision for you. But as far as the quality of education, it's the same. It's a U of T degree, but the environments are different. St. George is bigger. It's in the city center. 
Uh, Mississauga and Scarborough are a little bit smaller outside of the city center. So um, it's good to research them and see what the differences are, but you're there, you're not, uh, you're not, no disadvantage on, on the campus you choose. It's a personal choice. Um, so for scholarships, as I mentioned, you're automatically considered for those. Check out awardexplorer.ca uh, and you can see all the different scholarships, but no application, automatic consideration. Um, so I'm just going to read, continue to read some of these questions. Uh, is University of Toronto benefited all your okay. fees? So fees um, are, if you just Google University of Toronto fees, you can find out they vary from program to program. Um, and unfortunately, they go up every year. So our tuition is expensive. But for most programs, art, science, commerce, for example, in Canadian dollars, you're looking at a, a, over 55000 per year. For engineering, it's over $60,000 a year. So that's what the tuition is. Uh, currently, if you go to www.fees.utoronto.ca, you'll be able to see uh, the, the updated list of what the fees are. For scholarships, like I said, you're automatically considered, and um, there's no separate application for that. I'll just put some things in the chat here for you guys. So this is for the student that was asking about fees. It's in the chat. Coming up, and uh, I'm going to also put Awards Explorer in here because this is where you can learn about the different website. Uh, sorry, this is the website where you can learn about the different scholarship opportunities that we have at the university. There we go. Okay, so back to your questions. Um, is there a scholarship for master's programs? Yes, there, there are, but you have to contact the graduate school or research those because I only specify in undergraduate. Um, we do not have uh, two plus two dual degree programs with Turkish universities. However, you can transfer. So if you did two years of university in Turkey and then you want to come and do two years of university at U of T, you can apply as a transfer student. But the maximum is two years worth. So it basically, it has to be 50% half U of T degree. So if you've done two years in Turkey university, you can apply. Then once you're admitted, we let you know how many of those credits are transferable uh, to U of T, and then you can continue your degree and finish it at the University of Toronto. For those, there's a question that said, uh, after we applied, could we change campuses in the second or third year? Yes, uh, if you want to switch campuses, it's not guaranteed, but as long as you're in good standing academically and there's room in the program, then you could transfer to another campus. Um, I believe we do have Turkish faculty members uh, at the university, but again, it's a really big school, so I don't know their names, um, but we would definitely have some uh, faculty from Turkey as we have faculty from all around the world. Um, do you have any representatives in Turkey? Unfortunately, uh, we have alumni that are currently there, but I'm the representative for undergrad, so I normally would be visiting, but not this year because of the pandemic, of course. Um, but there'll be lots of opportunities for you to ask uh, questions um, throughout the year. As far as how many Turkish students we have in total, um, we have uh, every year we have uh, several hundred students that apply, probably about four or five hundred students that apply from Turkey each year. And um, I, more than half of them usually are admitted. Um, and then whether they come or not, it, it always depends. So I would say that uh, uh, usually half of those students end up coming. It just depends 
Um, um, so for someone was asking double majors, do you have to pay uh, fees that are doubled? No, the you can do a double major and a minor. That does not increase your fees at all. It's just based on how you want to structure your degree, but there's no additional charge to do that. Um, so uh, there's questions about accounting and finance graduate program. Uh, please visit Rotman Commerce. Uh, Rotman has undergraduate and graduate programs. So you just have to see which one is right for you if you're interested in about finding out about finance or accounting, uh, whether undergraduate or graduate, but Rotman is our uh, area for that. Um, we have a degree for artificial intelligence, um, not in engineering, but in computer science. There's AI that you can do, definitely. So you want to look at the computer science program. Uh, we do have biomedical engineering. It's actually offered through chemical engineering. So once you click on chemical engineering, you'll see that you'll be able to pursue some biomedical uh, courses. Someone was asking, what is the difference between honors bachelor degree and normal bachelor's degree? Um, we only offer honors degree. That just means it's four years in length. So all of our degrees are four years, whereas some universities have a, a, just a regular bachelor's degree, which is three. But at U of T, they're all honors, which means four years. Um, so again, in terms of scholarships, um, you just want to check out Award Explorer to see those different options and you can filter, but you're automatically considered for any merit-based awards. There is no master's program for Turkish law. If you wanna practice law, if you wanna study law at U of T, um, you would be studying Canadian law. So it does not make sense for you to do law school in Canada unless you're planning to live in Canada to be a lawyer here. PhD studies, uh, again, you have to check the website. This session is focusing on undergraduate. So um, the, the link I posted earlier for graduate studies will tell you all of the options we have, or you can simply do a Google search to see what you're interested in. Um, a student is asking that they already um, have a bachelor's degree but want to study graduate again at U of T. What are the requirements? Uh, depends on what you want to study. Please check the website. If you have undergraduate questions in this chat, I'll be happy to answer them. All of these master's questions, unfortunately, um, I, I cannot answer these, these questions for you. Uh, okay, so here's a question. Uh, if we present both our national grades and IB grades, which type of grade is more important for our application? Also, does having both of these diplomas get us uh, scholarship opportunities? So um, when you apply on that portal, you're going to indicate to us whether you want us to consider you with your IB grades or your Turkish diploma grade. So you get to choose. Um, so you are going to indicate IB or Turkish diploma. So you tell us which one you want us. We don't care which one. We don't have a preference. Um, whichever one you feel more confident with is the one that you can uh, select. Um, for IB, though, if you um, if you get uh, uh, five or better on higher level subjects, you can get transfer credit. So we do issue transfer credit for all higher level subjects in the IB. Um, do you consider our yearly grades or do you take the results from our national university exam? No, we, we don't. We just, we're using the, so your Turkish diploma grades in progress the last two years, uh, the national university exam is not taken into account. Um, I would like to study business. Do you accept only IELTS as a language? Uh, so we accept many different tests in, in terms of, um, um, I'm going to just go back here to the slide uh, that showed our different tests. So we, IELTS is the most common, but we accept other, but only what you see here. So if you were doing IB, for example, English A, um, we would accept that instead, but we don't accept like SAT 
instead of the English facility. So you have to have an English facility. Like I said, hopefully we'll be accepting Duolingo, but uh, it's still not official yet. More master's programs. I'm currently studying psychology at university. Um, can I apply for undergrad in computer science? Yeah, if you want to do a second degree, you can absolutely do that. It just has to be different from your first one. So as long as you're not that you're not applying to psychology again, but something different like computer science, you could do that. Uh, Edge is uh, I am an eleventh grade high school student and interested in computer science. Do you have any suggestions for me? Other uh, others like me. Um, well, computer science is one of the programs that has a supplemental application. So number one, you need really good grades to get into computer science. Like I said, for Turkish diploma, you need to be in the 90s to be competitive. And then there's, there's going to be short essay questions that you will be asked to answer as well. And those really help uh, the, the department choose the right students. So being really good, number one but then also how you answer your supplemental will increase your chances of getting an offer. But there's nothing you can do to prepare for that supplemental. It's, uh, it's really just, um, it's you just uh, answering those questions and to the best of your ability. We uh, definitely, we do accept the French back. Yes, absolutely. Um, there is 3D design, I would say more in our faculty of architecture. Uh, there still will be some in engineering, but I know definitely uh, architecture and design is, is big for that. Um, so again, graduate programs for those interested, the, the deadlines are a little bit different. They're usually earlier, like the December. So you wanna check the graduate program you're interested in and find out what the requirements are and when the deadlines are, but they are typically earlier than undergrad. Um, so someone was asking about the recommendation for the, the, uh, the Pearson. It's a nomination uh, and it is mandatory. So you have to be nominated by your school first because once your counselor nominates you for that scholarship, then we send you the link for the application. Uh, and then you're able to fill out that application. So uh, the nomination is mandatory. You cannot apply yourself for the Pearson. Your, your counselor must nominate you. Um, as far as internships go, we have a, 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 yes, there's different internships that you could pursue at the university. Um, some of these are for, for pay, some of them are volunteer, some of them are for credit. So um, lots of opportunity you can, you can research now or you'll find out more once you're at the school by visiting the career center you can see all of the different opportunities that are listed um someone was asking about our tuition fees yes the domestic is much cheaper because canadian students pay tax here uh, because education is subsidized by the government so the domestic students pay much less than an international student would uh, because of the um, basically those the taxes so unfortunately the international tuition fees are quite high uh, so you do need to take that into consideration as you research your program areas uh, a portfolio is not uh, compulsory uh, if you are applying to say architecture uh, there is a, a supplemental application that is required where we'll ask you questions about, uh, uh, you know, you can tell us more about your work and you'll be able to show us some images of your design work, but it's not a, um, it's not a, 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 a compulsory uh, portfolio, but it's called the One Idea and you can look at that uh, online and see what the requirements are. um yes so someone asking for ielts it's 100 plus 22 on the writing yes you should have that uh if you don't have that you run the risk of being refused from the university so it's best to have the required score uh, when it comes to english facility um so for the admission requirements uh i'll just go back 
or let's see here on my screen. I'm just going to click a couple of slides back here. So that's just for the supplemental. Again, for those that are interested, only these areas have supplemental. Um, as far as um, what we're looking for grade-wise, let's see if I can pull that up. So this is just uh, a general requirements. This is not, uh, this is a range. This is not obviously exact numbers because it's too difficult for us to give an exact number of what you need each year. Um, I'm an 11th grade student who wants to study genetics. Do you have a recommendation? Yep, I would just look at our life science program. You're gonna see all the different offerings listed there. Your first year is general, and then you can decide after first year how you wanna structure your degree, uh, whether that's doing a double major in genetics or something else. Um, but yes, we definitely have it. Um, can you get PR while you study there? and it is going to affect your fees. Um, so that's a good question. You will need a study permit as an international student. I should have mentioned this earlier, but as an international student, you're legally allowed to stay in Canada for up to three years after you graduate. So that's a big bonus uh, because you can you know, apply for jobs here, you can find work, and if that's going well, then you can definitely apply for your PR status and stay in Canada. Um, as a student, you won't be able to apply for permanent residencies though so uh, because you'll have a you'll be on a different you're on a study permit but if your family said no we're moving to canada then if you got your pr status we would change your fees to domestic so if, you, if that ever changes your status then yes we will change it to domestic but if you're just coming here to study um, you, you you won't be able to apply for your pr as an as a student once you graduate you can work towards that. Um, can you mention, don't know that. Yeah, um, as far as the exchange rate goes, you just have to see online to see what the difference is. Uh, I know that the Turkish dollar is, is you know, it's unfortunately our tuition's gone up and the t Turkish lira has has not caught up so it does make it uh, more challenging uh, but hopefully you would qualify for a scholarship um yes yeah, so again if you were someone was asking if the government allows for you for international students to work you can absolutely work on or off campus once you're at the university as well so uh, our international students have the option to uh, work on campus, off campus uh, as well. So that's uh, that's gonna be an option for you. Um, yeah, so someone just mentioned I graduated from high school a few years ago. Can you study? Yes, you can, even if you graduate, you can still apply this year. Um, the, the earliest, um, it's most likely that our, our admission basically is each September. So uh, that's when classes begin. We have summer classes, but you would have to ask permission uh, once you're admitted to see if you could start earlier. Students coming directly from high school, they have to start in September. We don't have earlier admission, but uh, if you are a mature student, or, um, you can request to start a little bit earlier. So I know there's a lot of questions um, and we didn't get to them all, um, but hopefully you had a chance to fill out the, um, uh, the form that I put in the chat. Um, I'm gonna put it one more time just for you guys that maybe didn't have a chance to see it because then you can have more specific questions. Um, by filling out this form, we can help you and answer more of those questions after the chat. And um, let's just see more questions. Um, do you have any 100% undergraduate and online distance education? So we do have some online uh, classes you can take, but not 100%. You cannot do your U of T degree, or, uh, you know, road. Uh, online 100% now with COVID depending on what happens 
that might change. That's so in a regular, if we're not talking about the pandemic, the answer is no. You can take some classes, but you'd have to be in person to to do some uh, to to get your de degree requirements completed. But moving forward, um, you know, hopefully that's not the case. But these things are always changing. So uh, as we learn more and as we advance, um, we'll see about that. Because currently, for the students that are at the university. They are doing, um, so our, our students from Turkey this year, they obviously are, are starting remote, uh, working, uh, taking their classes online, and then hopefully in the second semester, or if not this year, then next year, there'll be classes in person. But time will tell, and uh, you just have to keep checking the website for updates. Um, so if your sister is Canadian and you're not, then you still have to pay the international uh, fees uh it's you have to have citizenship or if your parents have canadian citizenship then um then you might be eligible for the domestic tuition so uh, is if your parents have that maybe you would qualify then so someone was asking is there an advisor to register if you have face to face to face problems or any questions um no, but we, uh, I'm going to post something in the chat. It was mentioned on the website, um, but I'll just post it in the chat. This is a site that where basically, I, I know there's lots of stuff for you guys to look at, but um, this site is dedicated only to our, our broadcasts coming up. So you guys tuned in through um, this uh, IEFT. But we at UToronto have at discover.utoronto.ca, so I just put it in the chat. That website is going to show you all of our broadcasts. So we have recordings there of broadcasts that we've already done and future chats. Again, that will be more specific to maybe the interest, your interest, the areas you're interested in. This is still only undergrad. So for those interested in master's, PhD, you have to go to the, that website, the graduate school, to see if they're doing something similar to what we're doing here in undergrad, but discover.utoronto.ca will have also the opportunity for you to have one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, 15-minute chats like this where I can answer your questions directly. So you can check that website to book a time slot. Uh, those will be probably coming a little later in the, in the season, but we'll have lots of webinars, uh, more specific general ones, and the chance for one-on-one -on -one as well. So that concludes our time for today. I want to thank everyone for joining me. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to all of your questions. There's a lot of them, and a lot of them, again, that are, are not specific to my area, uh, which is the graduate area. But uh, I appreciate you taking the time. Please visit Discover to see more upcoming sessions, and please fill out that form that I posted in the chat a few times so you can fill out your information, and we can help you learn more about us. Okay? Uh, thank you so much. Take care, everyone, and all the best. Adam, thank you very much. Uh, it was a very fruitful webinar session, and it was very intensive, actually. Uh, you covered most of the questions. Uh, thanks again. Uh, it was very nice to welcome you at the IFT Talks webinars. Uh, but in case, if there are more questions, further questions, maybe uh, you can share your email address or contact information of the university in the chat box again. Yeah, I would just encourage everyone to fill out that form because once you fill out that form, then that's our way of saying so because I do Turkey, then uh, Turkish questions will will be directed to me. So if you fill out that form, that's the best way to get a hold of me. Okay, thank you very much. Sounds great. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.